Hello and welcome to Yoga Basics. I'm Patty, I'll be your instructor. Let's go ahead and begin by taking a comfortable seated position on the floor. You can sit on blankets like I've got here or you're welcome to sit to a chair wherever you are more comfortable. When you have found yourself a comfortable seat on the floor, then find your breath. You'll find your breath first outside of your nose, then you'll feel it somewhere in the body and just observe your breath. Were you holding your breath? Is it light? Is it heavy? Don't make any judgment calls about your breath. Just notice what is. And once you've found and recognized your breath, let's go ahead and transition the point of origin of the breath from outside the nose to down in the belly. And even though we don't really breathe with the belly, it's called diaphragmatic breathing, and it feels like we're filling the belly on the inhale. And then you will literally draw the belly back on the exhale. So just take a few more of these deep belly breaths, allowing the breath to rise up the spine on the inhale, and allowing your breath to slide back down the spine on your exhale. One more time. Lifting on the inhale, maintaining any lift you get as you exhale the breath back down. And now let's set an intention. So I'll invite you to bring your hands to your heart, press your palms, thumbs, and fingers gently together, and pull your shoulders apart. You'll feel your heart lift and open. And as you feel your heart lift and open, take a moment and set an intention for yourself. Claim for yourself what it is that you want, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Take just another moment with this intention. And so it is. Blink your eyes open if they were closed. Inhale big. And then exhale, bringing your hands back down to your lap. Joining me today for this session will be my close friend and fellow teacher, Mebby. So we're gonna work today on just some general opening of the body and then we're gonna do a standing stretch. It'll feel really good, but some of you may find that you'll need something to put your hands on. Mebby has been practicing and teaching yoga for decades. She's very, very flexible. Others of you might not be so flexible. So if you have a chair that you wanna put your hands on, keep it handy. Or if you happen to have yoga blocks with you, bring those out and you can use those. So let's go ahead and begin with some Sufi rolls. So come off of your supports and maybe just come straight to the mat. Bring your legs out, rock to release any tension that was built up. And then let's go ahead and bring the right leg in first and the left leg in front of it. You're attempting to have your legs side by side so that you don't squish your feet so much. And these are called Sufi rolls. You've done this with me before and they're an excellent way to warm up the body. They can be done before you eat, they can be done after you eat, they can be done when you haven't had anything to eat at all. Dramatically moving lymph fluid and helping to release stagnant fluid and energy from the midsection. So your hands are on your knees or your shins. Inhale, lift your heart and exhale, fold your heart forward, bringing the heart towards the floor. And then let's go to the left first. Holding on to the knees or shins, drop back, moving to the right, and then press your heart to the floor again. So as Mebby makes these circles, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on. As she presses her heart forward, she's opening up the front of her spine. As she drops back, like arched like a cat, she's opening up the back of the spine. So you have about 24 joints around the 26 or so bones of your back. And those joints are like any other joint in the human body. They need to be moved through their range of motion. So right now we have flexion, extension. We have her arching through the back dramatically moving lymph fluid through the torso, as well as opening up deeper into the hips and the knees and the ankles. So maybe when you come to your left knee, put your left hand on the floor. Reach your right arm over your head. Now you wanna get your right ribs lifted and you wanna send your breath into the right part of your body, the right side of your body, while looking down at your hand on the floor. This keeps it out of the neck. Now while your arm is elevated, go ahead and roll through your wrist, putting this wrist joint through its range of motion, going one way and then going the other. You can twist your arm, internal and external rotation. And then when you're ready, still looking at the floor, bring your arm behind you, drop it to that far knee, and then bring that arm in front of you. 
making big, huge circles with this right arm. Making sure you take a good stretch through the wrist, through the elbow, through the side body. And when you feel complete with this posture, you're going to go ahead and place your hands back on your knees and do just a couple more circles. And this is going to stabilize the QL muscles that sit on top of your pelvis to stabilize your low back. And then when you're ready, you'll come on up. Now we're gonna twist this posture. So Mebby's gonna bring her left hand behind her back. Her right arm is gonna cross over and go upside down on top of that left thigh. This is gonna prevent her and you from picking that knee up and changing the positioning of the pelvis. So you keep that knee down, pressing with the back of your wrist. Inhale, lift your spine up. And then exhale and turn just your torso to the left, keeping your head at midline. We'll bring the neck in in just a moment. So allow this pose to work with your breath. You'll loosen just a little to take the inhale, find the extension of the spine on the inhale, and then you're gonna use the twist to facilitate the thoroughness of that exhale. Once more, inhale, lift, exhale, twist, and now look over your left shoulder, bringing yourself into the fullest expression of this pose. Take another full cycle of breath here, lifting on the inhale, maybe going a little deeper into the twist on the exhale, and then release. And bring your torso back forward and pause for a moment and just feel what you've done to one side of the body and feel how it's different than the other side. And now let's do the other side. Legs out, rock to release any tension that might have built up. And then since we're doing the other side, let's bring the left leg in first and the right leg goes in the front. If you feel like you're squishing your feet and you wanna put some blankets under the feet to cushion the bones, that's fine too. You want the lower part of your body to be as comfortable as possible. So hands are on your knees or your shins. Inhale, extend the spine up. And then exhale and fold forward, bringing the heart towards the floor. And then the circles to the right and around. Making big, huge circles with your torso around your lap putting the spine through its range of motion in this way, opening and closing through the spine, going deeper into hips and knees and ankles, as well, as I said, dramatically moving lymph fluid through the body. The lymph fluid is, fluid is a big player in your immune system. And then the next time you come over your right knee, place your right hand on the floor and look at it, keeping it out of your neck, and then reach your left arm up and stretch through the left side body, bringing your breath into those left side ribs. Take an opportunity to roll that wrist going in one direction and then in the other, twisting the arm, internal and external rotation. And then when you're ready, bring that arm behind you. Continue looking down at the floor to keep it friendly in the neck, and then bring that arm forward and make a few big, huge, internally rotated circles now through this left side. Breathing deeply. And when you feel complete through this side, place your hands back on your knees and shins and take another circle around the lap, again to stabilize the muscles at the low back. And then Come on up. Okay, so let's come on to hands and knees, and we're gonna tradition, or we're gonna transition from hands and knees up to standing here in just a moment. So make sure your mat is clear. You're going to inhale and look up and pull your shoulders apart. And then as you exhale, arch like a cat, drawing the belly to the spine and tucking the chin to the chest. Get a good opening in the back of the body, and then come back into an inhale up, opening through the Shoulders in the front of the body. Exhale back up into cat. Taking a great stretch through the back. Inhale back forward. And now let's take your jaw and pull it forward and stretch through the platysma muscle that colors the front of the thyroid. We call this piranha. Make it look silly. And then back up into cat. Nice. Bring yourself to a flat back and tuck your toes. With your toes tucked behind you, you're going to go ahead and just lift your hips up and walk your feet towards your hands and slowly roll your way up to standing. 
Excellent. So we're going to do a wide-legged forward fold. So this is where you might need blocks or books if you have books or a chair in front of you. So you're going to bring your legs as wide apart as your hands when they go up. So the, the rule is to attempt to get your foot to land somewhere underneath your wrist or so. If the foot comes too far out, you're going to end up doing the splits, and that's not what we're teaching today. So from here, maybe inhale your arms straight up. Nice. Draw your low belly in, protecting at the back, and find three points on each foot. So you'll press at the base of that big toe, base of the pinky toe, middle of the heel, trying to engage those three points. If you feel your feet rolling in, push the outer edge down. If you feel your feet rolling out, push the inner edge down until you find balance. Now we're going to fold this and you're going to need to be very careful with the low back by using the belly for support. Inhale here and as you exhale, draw your belly to your spine, open your arms wide and fold, placing your hands wherever they'll go. So Mebby can go flat handed to the floor and she can fold all the way down. This is an excellent stretch. The inner legs, the outer legs, the back. So possibly what you might look like, so maybe bring your arms to straight, yes, and then come to fingertips. So for some of you, this might be your posture. If this is where you are, pull your inner thighs back and reach your head away from your hips, getting a lot of length through your spine. You can even pull the shoulders apart, opening at the shoulders. See how your breath manages in this posture. What happens as you're inhaling? What can you feel in the expansion of that rib cage? And then as you're exhaling, remember to really draw your belly back firmly to the spine. Those of you that have got a little bit more room, you can walk your hands back and you can fold down into this position. Eventually, this particular posture can even become a head balance, but that's not what we're teaching today either. We're just taking the stretch. Now let's go ahead and twist this stretch. So Mebby's gonna bring herself back up to fingertips and place her left hand right in the middle of her body, right at midline, and bring the right arm up towards the ceiling. Turn and look up at that right hand, but balance the weight through your feet and balance the weight through your hips, maintaining stability in the lumbar spine and finding the twist through the thoracic and through the cervical. Inhale here, and as you exhale, bring that hand back down. Remember, it can come to a chair. It does not have to go to the floor. Putting it at midline, lift the left arm up. Inhale here. You're keeping the pelvis very stable, not twisting from the low back, just twisting from the mid back and up to the neck. Take another in breath here, and then exhale, and that hand comes down. Fantastic. All right, so maybe from here, wiggle your feet just a little bit closer together. This is going to protect the adductors on the inner thighs. Then she's going to push into her feet, bring her arms wide like an airplane, and inhale, lifting all the way back up. And then let's exhale, hands to the heart, coming back to midline. Fantastic. Wiggling the feet all the way back together. Rebuilding Tadasana one more time. Turn and face me and we'll give a side angle to it. So her feet are hip width apart. Her, little, her middle toes, the two middle toes are facing me, which means her big toes are turned in just a little. Finding those same three points on the feet, she's gonna firm the midline. If you're curious about firming the midline, it is the opposite of clenching the buttocks. So if you've clenched your buttocks, you've actually dropped into the pelvic floor, you've released the center muscles, this isn't uh, a comfortable position and it puts too much pressure on the pelvic floor. So you release the buttocks and you continue that action until you feel the heads of your femur bones moving away from each other up in your pelvis. You'll feel your low belly drawing in. You've got your sternum, this bony chest protection, coming towards the throat. Your scapulas, those shoulder blades, are sliding down your ribs towards your back waist, pulling the shoulders apart from each other. And breathe into dasana. Now, we're going to go ahead and do a reclining twist to come out of this. So if you'll come to your back with your knees bent, your lump, anyway, either way is just fine. The guys are used to your head being there when Jesse's here. 
So the lumbar spine doesn't twist much. It's only got about five degrees of rotation, but the thoracic and the neck have a lot more than that. So go ahead and bend your knees, and we're gonna twist just through the upper body, supporting the low body. Press into your feet, lift your hips. While your hips are in the air, shift them to the right and lower them, and then straighten your left leg. Bring your right knee into your chest. Pull the right knee, point the left toes, Take a stretch here, breathing into this stretch. We're opening up the soft part of the pelvic floor. Inhale, and then exhale the knee all the way across your body, putting the knee to the floor. If you can't get your knee to the floor, you can tuck these toes on top of the straight, right, straight left leg if you want to. But you put the knee to the floor so we can stabilize the lumbar spine. Then you're gonna reach that right arm up and open and take the twist through the thoracic, and then you're gonna look down that straight arm and bring it up into the cervical neck and just melt, allowing your body to take on this shape, letting your breath gently spiral in, maybe lifting you a little and then gently spiral out, possibly dropping you just a little bit deeper into this posture. One of the most nourishing postures that you can do for your spine. And it also helps to reset the bones of the back or the hips if they've shifted during practice. So from here, inhale. As you exhale, draw your knee into your belly and roll to your back. Feet on the mat and square your hips. Once you're square, press into your feet, lift your hips again and shift them to the left. So your hips are offset to the left. Right leg straight left knee comes in. Pull the left knee, point the right toes. The pelvic floor is a figure eight shaped mesh of muscles and it takes an angle to angle stretching. Bladder, prostate for some of you down here, good place to open up for a free flow of fluid and energy. Inhale into your stretch and then exhale that knee across. Make sure to bring the knee all the way across. Now if you've got back issues and you want to put that knee on something, that's fine too. I got it girl. Oh, you got it. So here we've got a stack of blankets, and Mebby can put her knee on this stack of blankets. This is going to support the lumbar spine so that it doesn't rotate anymore, but it also gives her a little bit more room. So some of you that might not have the same twisting ability through the waist, you might want to support your knee up here. Then you're going to reach that left arm up and open and turn your head and look down that straight left arm. Now I know Mebby's body really well, so we're gonna let her knee come back down so that she'll be balanced on both sides. In this particular stretch, you melt. You soften the surface body, your superficial muscles release so that we can engage the deep body. You've got muscles all along the spine that look like little pieces of macaroni, and I think they're called uh, metiphitis. And you want these little muscles to engage so that they can reset the bones of the back or the hips if that's needed. At the same time, they're putting your spine through its full range of motion, and you just breathe and relax. And then after a few moments in this posture, take an inhale. And as you exhale, draw your knee into your belly and roll to your back. Feet on the mat and square your hips. Now from here, we wanna do a little bit of upside down. So we wanna get the hips above the heart, but we also wanna get the feet above the head. So we're gonna take these blankets and she's gonna rest her backside on them. So bring your knees into your belly Here's the blankets and scooch onto them. We'll have to practice that some more. So from your back with your hips elevated, make sure you're comfortable. Is that enough? You can come up high into the back so that the lumbar spine is fully supported. Now the hips are above the heart. Bring your knees into your belly and the feet up. Going upside down is one of the most important aspects of your yoga practice. There's a fluid in your body called lymph fluid. The lymph fluid cleanses the blood. Now your blood is pumped by your heart. So pretty much no matter what position you get in, the blood's gonna get there. So even though it feels like you're losing blood in your feet, you're not really. The lymph fluid that cleanses the blood is not pumped with the blood. The lymph fluid moves when you move. You're the pump. So 
the lymph fluid through the body has to make its way back into the torso where all, most of our lymph nodes are. There's a few behind the knee, but the majority of them are where things come together in the torso. So we have to get the lymph fluid from the extremities back into the middle of the body. And we do this by going upside down. There are three very important poses in yoga. Two of them are very advanced and they're both upside down poses. The last pose is a Shavasana and that's what we'll be coming into now. But this is the way to go upside down without having to employ uh, extreme advanced postures. So far, and I teach yoga therapeutically, I haven't found anyone that can't find a comfortable place in this posture. If you've got retinal issues or if you've got an upset stomach, don't lift your hips up, but go ahead and put the feet above the head. So maybe let me show that. Uh, put your feet on the mat, press lift. I'm gonna take the blankets and then she's just gonna literally put her feet up into the air. This also positively affects the valves that are in your veins. And when a valve fails, it makes a varicose vein. So we can avoid having that happen by regularly putting the feet up into the air. And now let's come into the most important pose, your Shavasana. So we'll take some squeezes first. Draw your knees into your belly, wrap your arms around your legs, your feet are side by side. Inhale here and exhale, squeeze yourself into a tiny little ball. Then loosen the squeeze, inhale, and then exhale, squeeze, pulling the belly back, tucking the chin, then loosen, inhale, exhale, squeeze, it's a final internal massage, and then release, and let your legs go long down the mat or down the carpet, whatever you're working with. Rock your hips until your low back gets comfortable, and let your toes splay open. Flatten through your upper back, whatever you have to do to get your upper back to flatten, and let your palms face up. maybe has got her arms up high, you can bring them down low, whatever your shoulders are more comfortable doing. Just turn the palms up when you do it, getting a little external rotation of the arms, they don't get much of that. And then tuck your chin so you get long in the neck. Now from here, you melt. For the next few long moments, you're just gonna let your body take on this shape. Let your belly soften so that your navel drops towards your spine as you exhale. Release your chest. Imagine that your shoulders are melting down your arms, pretending that your palms feel like puddles. Swallow, releasing through your throat, letting the skin on your cheeks go slack. Allow your tongue to rest gently in the back of your mouth, releasing any unspoken words, releasing any conversation with yourself, and tuning in instead to observation of yourself. Observe yourself as you let your tongue spread side to side. Soften your face. Bring your gaze inward. Be brave and release the grip of your brain letting it rest gently in the back of your skull. Let your skull widen and spread on the mat. Find your front body and in its entirety, let it melt into your back body. Let your back body then melt into the mat, into the floor, into the ground. In the final few moments of this pose, just observe Observe yourself releasing any tension that might try to creep back up, making sure fingers are soft and toes are released, making sure your belly stays soft, your face stays soft, softening the skin around your eyes, releasing again through your forehead. And then observe your breath as it moves through your body. Don't try to control your breath, just Watch what it's doing naturally, following your inhale, following your exhale. And wherever your mind goes, if it slips away and starts thinking about something or starts talking to you, just say shh to yourself and escort your mind back to your body and back to your breath. Tuning in maybe to the sensations that you feel at your lips and fingertips and trying to move those sensations through any part of your body you can get them to go. 
and then go ahead and start deepening your breathing now. Wiggle fingers and toes, make circles with wrists and ankles, and then reach your arms up long and stretch your fingers away from your feet. Make space and release. Drawing your knees into your belly, roll to your right side, but you can roll to your left if you want, making a pillow for your head with your arm. Pause here while your body transitions and take this moment and thank yourself for your practice. Inhale. And on the exhale, use mostly that upper arm to press up, bringing yourself into any comfortable seated position that you'd like to be with your hands at your heart. Let your heart lift, bow your head, and namaste. <laughs>